Hi guys, Dane here, and today I am going to be doing the Briggs book tag. So this was created by a jaded reader, and uh, basically this is all based on the Myers-Briggs personality types. So there are sort of 16 basic personality types. A lot of people call it pseudoscience. I don't really care because personally for me, it comes in pretty handy for writing. So I personally know my Myers-Briggs personality type. I had to do a test for it when I joined my old company before going freelance. And uh, I have a friend as well who we talk about it a lot as well. So I am an INTJ. Uh, my friend is an INFP. Becca is an INTP. Yeah, we have a lot of uh, introverts on BookTube. A lot of INTJs and INFJs from what I've seen. Enough of the people have taken this tag now that you probably heard them explain it much better than I have. So, what we're going to do here, I'm going to click the link to the, uh, to the, to the thing and we're going to figure it out as we go along. I haven't brought any books with me because I'm not too sure what's going to be asked. Okay, so Briggs book tag. This is a five prompt tag. Step one, know your Myers-Briggs personality type. So mine is INTJ. Step two, answer the prompts that make your acronym. So for me, we'll start with the I, which is introvert. You can be outgoing, but you need to recharge with some calming solitude. Where is your favorite place to read and unwind? Why is this little oasis where you choose to go? I mean... Here we are. I, cho I choose to go here because it's convenient. Well, this is where I spend half my time. I mean, it's my office, effectively, as well, and uh, I just read throughout the day. I also read in bed before I go to sleep, but I will also happily uh, read in the car, so, or like on the train or something. My favourite place to read and unwind, probably bed, probably is bed, because that, you know, throughout the day I just read to keep myself going through the day, whereas when I'm in bed I read specifically to unwind. And why is this little oasis where I choose to go? Well, it's more that I'm already there and then I choose to read. I don't know. I don't think I have a specific reading place. I, I, don't, I didn't really know that was a thing that people did. I just read everywhere. So this is the N, intuition. Some books are meant to be understood and others are meant to be explored. What book or character stands for an idea that is deeply meaningful to you? I'm going to have to go for my work in progress, which is a book called Meat. And it's set on a factory farm and... Uh, yeah, basically it explores why factory farming is bad and why eating meat in general is bad, but in particular why it's a really bad idea to put lots of animals in one place. Uh, I don't want to give too much away about the plot, but basically disease and uh, everyone dies. <laughs> so yeah, but um, yeah, that's deeply meaningful to me because I care about animals. Yeah, Thinking tea. Non-fiction for some can seem tedious, but where would we be without the truths of our world? What book, text, or reading material have you found yourself referring to when in need of real-world answers? <laughs> Wikipedia. I don't. Know. Um, what physical book? Well, I guess what book, text, or reading material? Yeah, I mean, yeah, Wikipedia. We have the Oxford English Dictionary has come in handy from time to time. It really depends. Again, if we're talking about. Uh, if we're talking about meat, for example, my factory farming novel, I read a bunch of stuff to research that. Uh, I actually talked about that in my Why I'm Vegan slash Plant Based video, which I'll link to below. But um, I also read a book called Undead Obsessed by Pembroke Sinclair. That may give you slightly more of an answer of what is going on with the animals on the factory farm. But um, yeah. I, it just depends. In need of real world answers. Well, the real world is quite a complex thing with lots of different subjects. So it depends what part of the real world we're talking about. I've read books to help me to deal with anxiety and depression, for example. I've read biographies of musicians that I admire to, you know, learn more about their lives. I, I, I don't know. I've read a book called Eating from the Cherry Tree, I think it was called, which was about somebody who was uh, who used to be a madam and ran a brothel. I guess that answered my uh, question of what is it like to be a madam that runs a brothel? I don't know. I didn't really seek that one out. It just came to me, as it were. All right, and finally, Judging Jay. 
All play and no work leads to chaotic disorder and anarchy. How do you structure and balance your reading, booktube, and personal life to better use your time? No, no chaotic disorder and anarchy. Everything is very rigidly planned down to the last detail. I work in 45 minute chunks every day. In fact, if you want a video about my routine, it's called the schedule. If you want a video about that, let me know and I can talk about that. But I work in these 45 minute chunks and then I read five, 10 minutes after each chunk. Uh, I split that up into my writing time, my tidying time, and my computer time, but also different things kind of under tidying, for example, that's where cooking comes in. I can also read during that time. It's all very complicated, basically, but the system that I have works. I'm always constantly working. I'm definitely uh, all work and no play. I don't know. I don't play. I mean, even booktube really is it you know as much as i love being part of the community and stuff the reason i started i suppose was to get the word out about my books and the same reason i started writing my book blog sort of five years ago you know uh so yeah i feel like my answers to this tag aren't particularly interesting but maybe you're getting more more out of it i don't know step three answer the question match with your personality okay intj the masterminds you're not in it for the small talk, so let's cut right to the chase. What book captures the idea of what it is to be human? It's a really depressing answer, but it's Lord of the Flies by William Golding. That's what it's like to be human. So it's kind of depressing, to be honest. Everyone forms their own little tribes. Everyone's at war with each other. You know, people don't want to find their common ground. Poor Piggy gets abused. Yeah. I don't know, I think that probably is the most the most human book that comes to mind anyway. Or Frankenstein, maybe. Because Frankenstein's monster is a perfect illustration of what it is to be human. Frankenstein's monster is human. I mean, it's not, but it is, if that makes sense. Step number four, tag people. Alright, now bear in mind, uh, if you don't know your Myers-Briggs type, you can take it below. Uh, I will link to the all the questions and all the info and also to some personality tests that you can take. As usual, I am going to tag some people who recently commented on my videos. Keen to hear what, you know, let me know in the comments actually if you know your type, what type you are. Um, it would be interesting. There, are, there do seem to be a lot of INTJs on BookTube, which is interesting. Alright, I'm going to tag... Oh my god, I don't even know who some of these people are. Uh, Alex Black... Carla's Book Bits, A Wondering Mind, Todd the Librarian, obviously, Brian's Bookshelves, Anthony Andrews, Mindy's Book Journey, Melissa and Barnsley Reed, Mad Misanthropy Books, Time for Books, and Hooked on Books, slash Hooked on Books. There we go. So yeah, that was the Briggs book tag. I don't know whether I did a particularly good job of it, but we have styled it out. So on that note, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Like I say, let me know in the comments what your personality type is, if you know it. If not, let me know if you've read any of these books and what you think. Hit subscribe if you're new here, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.